here. Today we're going to make a styling hanging decoration, paying particular attention to their amazing triangular feathers and iridescent sheen. Starlings are very boisterous, sociable characters and spend most of their time in flocks. Like corvids and blackbirds, they are extremely adept at mimicry and have been heard imitating phone ringtones, alarms and sirens, a spray can shaking, children crying, as well as frogs, hens, sheep, owls and other birds, among much, much more. They are widely distributed around the UK, except for the high highlands of Scotland and are especially abundant down south. In winter, their number almost doubles when thousands migrate from Eastern Europe to join their British cousins. At their peak, their numbers can reach up to the hundred thousands. From September to November, through the winter months, a magical phenomenon occurs. At dusk, as the flocks come to roost, they perform incredible aerobatics, creating flowing formations against the sunset. This is called a murmuration, and you can see them doing this at RSPB's Leighton Moss in Silverdale. I've been told February is the best time, and also Blackpool Pier. They are thought to do this for a number of reasons. On mass, they confuse predators such as peregrine falcons, who are unable to focus on a single bird. They generate and sustain warmth amongst them against the cold night air and they can exchange information such as good feeding grounds. So gather together your materials. You'll need some wax crayons, black paint and a brush, PVA glue in a brush, cocktail sticks or toothpicks, raffia or string or ribbon, scissors, scrap newspaper, some heavyweight white card, I've used 220 gram, a pencil or ruler and a blunt butter knife, just check with an adult first, and then something to measure, either a ruler or tape measure, but don't worry too much, you can always go by eye. Using the template included on the Creative West End project page, draw out your shape and cut out. With an adult's help, get your pencil or ruler and a butter knife and lightly score at the base of the wings, then fold. Flip over and repeat through the middle so your two sides fold and meet. Then we want to completely cover one side with wax crayons. This will be the outside of your starling. Then flip it over and colour in your wings and tail a little bit past the insert. This will be the inside. Get your black paint and cover the outside completely. The wax in the crayon will repel at first, but just persevere and you'll get there. And once you start getting coverage, just go with what you have. You don't want the paint to be too thick. Gently prise off and dry on a clean sheet of newspaper. Then we'll repeat on the inside, covering the wings and tail and just going around the edge. This is so when we come to stick our styling together later on, we won't have any white edge poking out. So as soon as both sides are dry, it's good to get going with your design. I found it scratches in much more easily. Cut a piece of raffia about 25 centimetres. So two centimetres in from the back of the wing is your sweet spot to place the ribbon. This means your styling will hang flat. If you put the ribbon elsewhere it will probably tip. Okay so glue the main body up to the insert of the tail, put your ribbon in place and add a little extra PVA for good measure. Stick down and dry on a clean sheet. And there you have it. Don't feel you need to stop there. You can make as many as you like and make your very own murmuration. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you very much for joining me and have fun and take care.